Hi, um, Keysight have kindly sent me this new DSO X Serono 2G scope to have a play with. I'm not planning on doing a sort of detailed review because I'm sure Dave at EV Blog will do that, but um, once he publishes that, I'll, if he's missed anything out, I might go over a few other points and he's also done a teardown of it. But just a couple of quick points that I wanted to do. Firstly, Keysight seems to have made a major omission in their published in data for this thing. And looking at some of the queries on the EV Blog forum, it, you know, it's very obvious that this aspect is really not made at all clear. Now this is marketed as a dual channel scope and as with most dual channel scopes because you've only got two channels there's usually a third channel which is in this case it's usually a, uh, an external trigger and indeed this one is actually marked as ext trig but this is not an external trigger input it's actually a completely general purpose digital input. So for example, we've got just two analog channels coming from function generator. If I just turn the wave gen on, I've now got a completely separate independent third channel. I'm not triggering on this channel, I'm still triggering on channel one. So, you know, this, isn't, this is not acting as a trigger input, this is acting as a completely independent external general purpose digital input. It's like a, sort of a two plus one MSO. And you can even, for example, you can set the thresholds on it, there's two different ranges, there's uh, 1.6 and 8 volts, and it'll take into account probe, the probe ratio. So this is set, set up to 10 to 1 probes, so if I just change that to 1 to 1 probe. So our fundamental ranges are 1.6 um, and 8 volts, and this is plus minus 1.8. So I can set the threshold anywhere between those, those two ranges, down from sort of minus 1.6 up to uh, plus 1.6. And obviously being a digital channel, yeah, that dictates the voltage at which this triggers. If I put this on uh, 8 volts, uh, if I increase the trip, obviously that, that's now above the uh, level of the signal I'm sending it. Similarly, if I go below, it goes high, so that's just setting the threshold on that um, channel. And also you've got position control, so again, you can move it up and down. It's you know, slightly less convenient having an individual control, but you can still do that. Now, of course, you can trigger on this, so you just select select it as your trigger source, so now triggering on that, that source. So, you know, external trigger is one of the things it can do, but by no means, you know, all of it. It's just a, a channel that, okay, you can trigger it on, but you can also, for example, I can set up a measurement. I can say, do a frequency measurement on that channel. If I trigger on it, it might make it look a bit more sensible. In fact, yeah, that, that is still, tra still, still um, tracking that and doing the measurements on it. Um, you can also do decodes on it. So, for example, if I do uh, select serial decode, um, you are, this probably isn't going to make much sense, but again, signals I can say receive external, so I can now decode on that. If you look at the data sheet, you know, it really isn't clear because they, it's really only mentioned in two places. If you look at the, the pages of the general specification table, it does actually show one digital channel. The only, there's literally just one screenshot that shows it and that combines it with the bus mode. So it's really confusing. It, it doesn't really make it completely clear that this is something that's just a completely independent thing. And this, this image is just showing it in conjunction with bus mode. The only other mention it gets is here, where it says external trigger can be used as a third channel and displayed on screen to just create a bus type display. Again, it's confu you know, it's mentioning it only in conjunction with bus mode, which is sort of implying that it's really, you know, that, that it's, you know, a trigger input and it only works in bus mode. There's nowhere at all in the data sheet could you get the fact that, you know, this is a completely separate channel that you can do measurements from, for example, which is um, a bit of a fail. Now, SPI mode is an interesting case because for SPI, in theory, you need four signals, sort of chip select clock, MISO, MOSI. But obviously, because you've only got three channels, you can only display one of those. Now, in fact, in the manual actually says that you can only show data in one direction. So and it says, you know, as you can see here, that MISO and MOSI lines are showing the same data because we can only monitor one at a time. But if you look at the data sheet, it actually says supports MOSI and MISO data. So something's clearly not right here. There's obviously been some disconnect somewhere along the line that they've uh, screwed something up. However, they have actually missed a trick. In theory, it would be possible to show data in both directions because one of the modes it has for chip select, instead of actually using the chip select signal, it can actually use a clock timeout because generally what will happen is you, you know, your chip select will go active, you'll get a burst of clocks and stuff will happen. So for decoding, you can actually ignore the chip select and tell it to frame by a clock timeout. So for example, if I say a clock timeout of 10 microseconds, so that's effectively one division. So if it sees no clocks within 10 microseconds, it assumes it's a new frame. So for example, here, it should detect a new frame here. So we can now disconnect our chip select 
and it'll still decode which is great so okay right you know we've got a new a spare channel in theory we ought to be able to assign that spare channel to the other data line but, but unfortunately it doesn't let you do that so we've currently got MoSi and MISO coming from the external trigger but in theory I ought to be able to assign that to channel 2 now but no it doesn't let me if I assign it to channel 2 it's also changed MISO as well that, that is weird, so it does mention this in the manual, but the manual also has no information. The manual does not include a single screenshot showing this third tray, so I suspect that maybe this functionality changed at some late stage in the um, development process, where they sort of wanted to decide their feature set. So, you know, we still have the X trig on the front panel. The data sheet barely mentions the uh, third channel, and the user manual actually just doesn't mention at all the fact that you've got this third channel. So hopefully they'll... Uh, Obviously, you know, they can update the data sheet and so on, but hopefully they'll, they'll fix this issue with the decode, especially as decoders are paid up. You know, if I paid for the SPI decode on a scope that has got three channels, I would really would want to be able to see data in both directions. It's um, a bit strange. So um, I believe they are uh, at least looking into it. So um, I can't imagine it's a hardware limitation that causes that and I suppose this does have a smaller FPGA than some of the bigger scopes I mean it's conceivable there's some limitation there but it just seems a little bit hard to believe that simply the ability to select an available channel to show both of these data things um, does seem to uh, be a bit silly especially as it's displaying you know, it's always actually displays them but it's always going to display the same data on those two regardless of um, how you configure it which is it's just daft so come on Keysight sort this out please